Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have something neat to show you. Well, as neat as antenna tuners can get, that is. Now this is the ATR1000, and this antenna tuner can handle up to 1000 watts PEP for SSB and CW, and 300 watts for FM, AM, and digital modes like FDA, within a frequency range from 1.8 MHz up to 30 MHz. Now the specifications say the maximum matching capacitance is 1270 picofarad and 2.7 microhenry inductance. Now personally, I'm not even sure if that is good or not, but from memory, I think it would be better on the higher bands. However, we'll test that later on. Now this also supports remote control via Wi-Fi, but again, more on that in a bit. On the front, we have a power switch, USB-C socket, which can be used for updating firmware. Then there's a 3.5 millimeter socket next to this, which can be used with a Morse key to use the inbuilt CW trainer. We then have a 1.8 inch color screen. And to the right of this, there's a little speaker. Underneath the speaker, there's two buttons labeled as A and B, and these are used to control the menu. On the far right, we have a rotary encoder, which is also a push switch, and this is used to control the menu settings or what information is shown on the display. On the rear, we have a grounding connector and two SO239 sockets, one to connect to your antenna and the other to connect your transceiver or amplifier. Now the ATR1000 requires between 11 to 15 volt DC to operate, and you can supply this with either the green connector block that you can see there, or the included barrel connector wire and just connect it to a battery or power supply. Now this little antenna here is for Wi-Fi control. Yep, you can control this ATU via an inbuilt web page that we'll go over later. Okay, so let's plug in the power cable and turn it on. Now the screen does actually look better in real life. It's just the refresh rate of my camera, which makes the screen look a little dodge. Using the rotary control though, you can choose one of the six options on the menu and this antenna tuner can show forward power and SWR. There's a couple of different screens you can choose from from the meter menu. Now you can also display a history of SWR, which can show in the form of a live graph. The memory page is where you can manage any user memory banks where you've saved specific tunes or tuning parameters. The Morse trainer is where you can configure the Morse trainer settings when you have a Morse key plugged into the front 3.5 millimeter socket. The remote page is where you can take a look at the current network settings, and the ATR1000 can work in hotspot mode, where you can connect via your phone or computer directly to the tuner over Wi-Fi, or you can configure the tuner to connect to your home network and access it via a phone or computer. There is also a cloud service, which I believe you have to pay for, and this also can be configured here. However, you could set up your own network and use it remotely without needing the cloud service. The tune page has lots of different settings relating to how the tuner performs. And you can set trigger levels, minimum SWR, maximum SWR, max power triggers, etc., etc. Now there's quite a lot of settings there and to really appreciate what's available, I would recommend to take a look through the manual, which is actually available online. Now there's a theme setting there where you can choose between light or dark. Now the dark theme does look pretty cool in my opinion as it has that nice black background. But actually they do both look really good, especially the power and SWR meters. The systems page is where you can change parameters like disabling the internal beeps, calibrating levels, factory resetting, and even firmware updating directly from this screen as long as it's connected to the internet. If not, you can still download the firmware and use a computer to update the firmware. But having firmware updates directly on the device itself is pretty cool and super user friendly. So I have the ATR1000 set up on my shack desk and connected in line with my NFED halfwave antenna. Now my NFED halfwave is only set up for 40 meters through to 10 meters. And I'm wondering if this would be able to match the antenna for use on 80 meter band. Now here's the SWR plot from my NFED half-wave antenna as it stands. 
and as you can see 80 meters has an SWR of around four and a half which is well outside of the safe usable range. Now, I've not showed this yet but in the lower left corner of the screen is a web page generated by the tuner and this on the bottom right is the ATR1000. Now when it's set to auto tune when the SWR is above a certain level we can see that the tuner kicks in when keying up on the radio and well it performs a tune. There are two tune cycle types there's either a full tune or a fine tune now what i found is that if a full tune fails then you can change the mode to fine tune and nine times out of ten i found this actually works now going through the meter options you can see there's a few ways in which you can show forward power reflected power and swr switching over to the dark theme we can see it actually looks really nice well, I think so, as mentioned before and in previous videos, I do like the blank backgrounds on these types of screens. Now, this is the full screen of the web UI when viewing on a computer. Now, you can perform fine or full tunes from here. You can set the ATU into bypass mode, restart the network, reboot and configure the network. You can also perform system updates from here and manage the memory banks or previously saved tunes. You can also manually adjust the inductance and the capacitance directly from this screen, just to give you that manual fine tune. Okay, so let's take a look inside to see what it's made of. And the first thing I noticed when opening this up was the cable routing for that Wi-Fi antenna. Now, while Wi-Fi is most likely around 2.4 gigahertz and upwards, and this tuner goes up to 30 megahertz, it should not really have any effect on Wi-Fi when it's in use. However, very occasionally I did see the web page stop updating for a brief moment when transmitting. Now, whether that was a network glitch, I'm not sure of, but the real test would be to really test this tuner away from the shack and nearer the antenna. Also, my Wi Fi router was only around a meter away from my radio, so that could have been the issue there. Inside, though, it does look pretty well laid out. Let me know what you think about the build quality down in the comments below. We do see lots of various types of devices like this come out of China and some are good and some are not so good. So here's another little clip of me tuning my NFED half-wave antenna on the 80 meter band and this time you can hear the relays which incidentally you can actually change the timings within the menu. So there we go guys, that's the ATR1000 antenna tuner. Now you may have heard of Ant Tuner before, and that's most likely because I've covered a couple of other tuners that they make, like the AT100M and the AT100M Pro. Now I'll leave links to those tuners if you also want to check them out. They're great portable tuners with inbuilt batteries. Anyway guys, let us know what you think about this down in the comments below, and until the next one, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.